Next, we have uh, Yu Zhu, uh, also from, uh, from Stanford University. And uh, she will tell us about uh, uh, borrowing from the future and attempt to address double sampling. Thanks for the introduction. So today I'm going to talk about a new algorithm to alleviate the double sampling problem in model free reinforcement learning. So this is a joint work with Le Xing Ying and Stanford. So, um, um, so first reinforcement learning is basically trying to find the optimal policy uh, for Markov decision process. Um, so MDP, a little bit uh, introduction about MDP. So MDP is basically uh, you have a state space and you start from a zero at the state space. And then you choose an action from the action space, A0. And then by some underlying transition dynamics, you will end up at position S1 with some probability. And it will have a corresponding reward R1, which depending on your action state. And then you repeat this process, you will have a Markov decision process. And the policy here, pi S, it basically specifies the action at state S. And an important uh, function, which is called value function in reinforcement learning, is basically the expectation of the total reward um, um, if you start from state S. And here we have a discount factor gamma. So this count factor gamma is a constant between zero to one. Um, so if gamma close to one, then we value the future words more. If it's close to zero, we value it less. Okay. So the main focus of this talk is about policy evaluation, which is the, I think, one of the basic problems in the reinforcement learning. Um, that is given a policy pi, how to compute the value function v under this policy pi. So this value function satisfies the following Bellman equation. So the value function is equal the expectation of the immediate reward plus gamma times the expectation of the value function at the next state. And we call this as the Bellman operator. So basically, the value function is a fixed point of this Bellman operator. And what's beautiful about this Bellman operator is that it is actually a gamma contractive operator. So uh, we can use like iterative methods to find the value function. And all those classic reinforcement learning methods like Q-learning, temporal difference are all based on this contractive property of the Bellman operator. However, this Bellman uh, this, uh, is not efficient when the state space is continuous or the discount factor is close to one. So what we do instead in this situation is people usually use function approximation. But unfortunately, with function approximation, the Bellman operator lost its contractive property. So one way to solve the value function in this situation is we transfer the fixed point problem to an optimization problem. Basically, you're finding the theta such that the value function satisfies the Bellman equation. Um, so there is a so-called double sampling problem uh, in, the optimization, in this optimization problem. So what is that um, double sampling problem? So in order to solve this uh, optimization problem, we usually use stochastic gradient descent. So uh, first let's see what is the gradient of this objective function. So it's expectation, uh, I'm sorry. So this is the um, expectation of the Bellman residual times the uh, gradient theta of the Bellman residual. And if we expanded the Bellman operator, we will see uh, this Bellman operator has the expectation of value function uh, of the next state. And we observe that we have two independent expectations on the next state in this true gradient of the objective function. 
So if we do SGD, the unbiased gradient also require two independent samples for the next state. So here's the picture. Um, when we do the SGD, for example, currently we are at state ST. And in order to get unbiased gradient of this objective function, we need two independent um, sample for the next state ST plus one and ST plus one prime. However, in a model free reinforcement learning, only the trajectory under the given policy is available. So the first sample can be easily obtained from the trajectory. However, the second sample is unavailable because remember, we are in the continuous state space. So um, it's hard to, it's almost impossible to find another exactly ST from your trajectory. And in many cases, tra the trajectory is not even recorded because of the high dimensionality of the state space. And um, in the reinforcement learning, people, um, it's usually impossible to go backwards to ST. It's always a forward processing. So this is the so-called double sampling problem in the model-free reinforcement learning. So here's our idea how to eliminate this double sampling problem. So first, we assume the underlying transition can be uh, written as a discretization of a stochastic differential equation with a drift term alpha and diffusion term sigma. And here, epsilon is basically the time discretization, a small constant. Okay, uh, with this underlying transition, so uh, from ST with this alpha and the sigma at ST, we will end up at ST plus one. And then we continue to do the next step. Um, under the alpha and the sigma at ST plus one, we will end up at ST plus two. And both this ST plus one and ST plus two can be easily obtained from the trajectory. And when the I find a sigma at, at if this two transition is similar to each other, then we can borrow the future transition to the current state and approximate the next state is t plus one by is t plus the future difference. So this is why we call it borrow extra randomness from the future. Um, so I think this is actually a very natural idea in the scientific computing. However, um, this hasn't been um, used in the model-free reinforcement learning. Um, and I think this underlying transition, uh, we require some smoothness of the underlying transition dynamics. Um, but I think this can be uh, satisfied for a lot of um, RL application with physical background. Okay. And we have two versions of this algorithm. The first is BF gradient. That is, we directly um, approximate or replace, replace the uh, unbiased SGD, the second um, sample by approximation. Um, and the second version is BFF loss. That is, we directly change the loss function. So we uh, replace the loss function, the second ST plus one by approximation. And given ST, ST plus one and ST plus delta ST plus one is actually independent with each other. So we can omit these two independent expectations, right? The, this loss function is equivalent to this one. So we, we don't have the double sampling problem for this new loss function. And then uh, the BFF loss is basically, basically applied the uh, unbiased SGD for this approximated loss function. And here are some theoretical results. So this theoretical result is uh, approved for the BFF loss. Um, so first assumption, we require the underlying uh, dynamics, this drift and diffusion is uniformly bounded. So basically this implies that you have some smoothness of the, uh, your underlying transition dynamics. And we compare our BFF loss with unbiased SGD. 
and we compared in two regions. First, asymptotic region, the, two, the equilibrium of these two algorithms is close to each other. The ratio is equal to one plus order epsilon squared. And here, this total is the learning rate. Here, it also implies that the learning rate cannot be too small. And second, uh, for any finite time, the PDF of two algorithms, um, the difference of the PDF of the two algorithms is order epsilon square. So as long as this epsilon is small, then the BFF loss and unbiased SGD is always close to, close to each other. Okay, so next is some numerical results. Um, so we come, uh, so first let's see um, the, this uh, is in the continuous state space and we approximate the value function by a three layer neural network. And we can see that BFF gradient and the BFF loss are perform as good as the uncorrelated sampling, which is unbiased SGD. And uh, we also have a comparison with the primal dual method, which is also a popular method used in the optimization form of the reinforcement learning. And uh, we can see here uh, the primal dual method um, is not very stable in this um, numerical experiment. Uh, sometimes it don't converge and sometimes it converge. And however, BFF um, method is always uh, stably converge. Okay. Uh, next, we'll, our method can also be applied to discrete state space. Um, here is um, some result. Uh, here shows that the BF loss is uh, as good as the GTD method. GTD is basically the primal dual method uh, in the discrete space in the tablet form. Okay, um, and uh, some recent progress. Um, uh, so actually this BF idea, this is a very recent paper we uh, has been uploaded on archive. Uh, this BF idea can also be applied to finding the optimal uh, policy uh, for the ring for the model free reinforcement learning. Okay, and we also has an on, has an ongoing work, which trying to apply the BFF in the policy gradient algorithm. And that's all for my talk. Thank you. Uh, yes. Okay, so if I remember correctly, I think Wayneen had a question for you. Wayneen, are you there? Can you ask uh, live? Yeah, sure. I mean, I was just wondering. Maybe you already said this, but I missed it. I was just wondering what goes wrong with uh, double sampling. Why, why is that so bad? Oh, um, Some sort of so, uh, let me, yeah, let me share my screen. Um, so the double sampling problem here is, is actually a problem you need to solve. And um, so for this um, objective function, the unbiased gradient, if you want to apply SGD to this op uh, optimization problem, you need a two independent sample for the next state. However, for model three RL, you only have one uh, sample available, another sample unavailable. Yeah. yeah, so this is called a double sampling problem that we need to solve. Um, and that's why we, uh, this is basically motivation of our new algorithm. Okay, so you, you mean that, that, um, that you don't create a bias if you don't, if you don't solve this problem, um, you create a bias. Yes, if, yes. If, for example, we just uh, take the same uh, ST plus one to the second sample, then we will have a bias to yeah. the uh, okay. gradient. Yes. Yeah, right. Okay, I see. Thanks. 